in China, entertaining friends is more than just a pastime. It is a very important integral part of uh, the culture. Most kitchens in China are normally very small, so people do a lot of the entertaining in the restaurant. But if they do entertain and cook at home, the menu is usually very simple but satisfying. Here is a wonderful, delicious way to start a meal for your friends. A Chinese seaweed soup with tofu and a lot of different types of seaweed. Okay, look at this. First, I want to talk about a lot of the seaweed that you probably have never seen this before because I have not seen it myself. Here, everybody know what this is. When you go to a sushi bar, a Japanese restaurant sushi bar, you see this. This is the regular seaweed, nice and thin piece of sheet. They call nori in Japanese uh, cuisine. And here, I have all kinds of things. Most of these available in Korean, Japanese, or Chinese stores. Here is shredded seaweed, dry. This is a little bit bigger. And this is salted pickle, soft seaweed. Okay? And this is the bigger piece of seaweed you normally put in dessert and casserole and stir-fried dishes. And also you have really small angel hair seaweed like this. And this is the seaweed we're going to use for the soup today. This is a whole seaweed, seaweed looks like a seaweed pancake. And I'm going to break it up and Soak this in water for approximately 15 minutes to 25 minutes and 36 seconds. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to break this up. I always tell people, whatever I tell you, you should put this down. Because everything I do, I follow exactly. Break this up, break this up. The great thing about doing this is by breaking this up, you use a lot of your energy. Burn up a lot more calorie. Look at this. And it's also a lot of fun. And then we break this up and soak that. And it only takes a few minutes to soak, OK? Look at that. It doesn't take too long to soak. They already break them all up like this, see? Very, very easy to do. And let it sit there for a little while. And I clean up my hand. And in the meantime, I want to show you the other thing that I'm going to use. First, I'm going to get ready some nice, clear broth. In the meantime, I'm going to cut up some of these, oh, let's put over here. Cut up some halibut. And I cut this in half, and then I go one. Cut it into pieces like this, set it aside, put it right here, and then I'm gonna marinate this with a tiny bit of wine, a tiny bit of cornstarch, and white pepper, and salt, put it right here. No soy sauce, okay? And then scallop, I'm gonna cut up the scallop into this unbelievably Greek sea scallop. Cut into three pieces, parallel cut, and then set it aside, okay? Cut it at an angle, an angle parallel to your cutting board, and then you set it aside, and then have some shrimp. And as I said, to save time, instead of doing it one by one, I'm gonna do it all together, like that. See? All done in three pieces, like that, like that. And then you transfer it over here, and then, of course, we're going to marinate this for a little while. In the meantime, I always use a chopstick to do it. You know, the great thing about chopstick is, I don't know how many of you know, this is a very interesting story. In ancient China, the people's fortune can be read by the way they hold the chopstick. If you use two finger, you are very carefree. If you hold the chopstick like that, you're very carefree. If you use four chopstick, that means you have good fortune, it means good fortune. If you use five fingers to hold the chopstick, that means you are destined for greatness, okay? If you hold the chopstick with all these fingers, that means you really don't know what the heck you're doing <laughs> with this chopstick. <laughs> Let it boil. The other thing that I would put in is, of course, the seaweed. Look at that, the seaweed. Talking about entertaining. A lot of time when you go to a Chinese restaurant, you order food, open a menu. You don't know what's going on. The best thing to do, my recommendation is, plan a very simple menu under each category of chicken, seafood, or beef. Order one. And also, all the variety of cooking technique. Don't order three deep fried dishes, okay? Cut it up. This is tofu. Set it aside and cut it up. Set it aside. This is all I need. I save this for tomorrow. And I cut it up, cut it up.
cut it up, cut it up, and then cut it up the little cubes like this. Put it over here. Tofu goes well with seafood. It's very, very bland, and it takes on the flavor of all the things. So the only thing you have to do is put some, see, I have some water chestnut. You can take a look. This is fresh water chestnut, and I'm going to show you we have Peel it and slice it up. I'm going to put some water chestnut. Give some texture and sweetness to it. Put some cilantro, chopped cilantro right here, okay? And then, of course, put a teeny tiny bit of sesame seed oil and, of course, salt and white pepper. And then, when you use white pepper, do not breathe. <laughs> I have total control. And then get ready some egg white. Shut off. Put the egg white. Oh! <laughs> Just to show you that I am real. <laughs> oh, unbelievable. I try to control myself, but I'm out of control. And then right before you're ready, cut this up. Chop some green onion. Okay, when this is all nice and ready, you set it aside and then get one of these and you are ready to serve. This is beautiful, beautiful. Nice and nutritious. And then you, of course, you garnish this with a tiny bit of chopped green onion and you have a beautiful seafood tofu soup. <laughs> now, let's go from soup to nuts. I'm going to show you a nutty salad made with walnut oil and candy walnuts. The first thing we'll get ready is the walnut. In fact, candy walnut is getting very popular in a lot of Chinese restaurants. Stir-fried prawn with candy walnut is one of the most popular Cantonese dish. This is a beautiful walnut right here, okay? Pick this up, pick this up, walnut. All I have to do is, this is already partially parboiled, nice and cooked, and I dried it up. And I'm gonna put this walnut right in here to this light syrup to make a little caramelize. This, let it cook for a little while, okay? And then, after you cook this, all we have to do is take it to oil. This is a Chinese way of doing it. You deep fry it. I don't know how many of you know that walnut are the oldest tree, food tree grown for mankind, dating back about 7,000 years BC. Now, hold on to this. I am going to put this over here and deep fry it, okay? Very easy to do. And I'm deep frying a few already. Let's look at this. It's deep frying and deep frying until the golden brown use low heat. How many of you know that walnut is also very, very versatile, convenient, it's a no fast food, that means you can use it in every single dish, any dish, salad, stir fry, all kinds of things. It is just folded in, it's as simple as that. And also, a lot of people don't know that walnut even though have some calorie, but they are also, they are basically primarily polyunsaturated fat, it's good fat that keeps the blood cholesterol down. So it's a good, healthy, fun eating thing. Stir, this use a chopstick stir. The ones that's already golden brown, you take it out and pick it up like this. See, use five chopsticks. Destined to be a great cook. Of course, everybody can do that. If you cannot do that, you use a tong, okay? Or use a strainer to do it. This way I can pick the nice golden brown one coming up and put it right here. Let it drain well. Put it right over here, paper towel, okay? When this is done, we set this aside and put this over here. Here, I wanna show everybody. This particular one, we wanna make it very interesting and exotic. Use some lotus root. This is the whole piece of lotus root. Look at that. Whole lotus root, lotus flower, lotus root. When you use it, it's very simple. All you have to do is use a peeler and peel it. Look at that. Nice and clean. And after you peel it, you can dump it in boiling water and parboil a little bit. And then they will look like this. Look at this. It's beautiful. I'm going to put this on the side. 
and then I'm gonna use a knife to cut it up. Look at this, it got a lot of holes, looks like a Swiss cheese, got a lot of holes here. Sometimes they even use it to stuff rice. Cut it up. See, beautiful pieces like this. We're gonna use this to garnish our salad. And all we have to do is, we have some enoki mushroom. Look at that, this is a little stem here. You gotta cut the stem off. We build this thing up, nice. Put this over here, mix green. Put it all nice and colorful. You can buy it in supermarket, or you can grow it in your garden, okay? And then, cut this up. The stem, you don't want it. And you put it beautiful, right here. Look at that, right in the middle. And then you lay out a few of these Look at how interesting. Very easy to do. Very unique appetizer. And then you put some walnut around. Look at how interesting. This is something everybody can do at home. And then, of course, without salad dressing. That's not a salad. So we're going to quickly make a really interesting, simple salad dressing. We'll tiny bit of walnut oil, sesame seed oil, Sesame seed oil, rice vinegar, brown rice vinegar, a dash of crushed chili pepper, and some honey. Look at that, some honey. And then a touch of salt, pepper, and lemon zest. Okay, mix them all up. When it's done, all you have to do is put it right over here and drizzle it in, and you have a beautiful You know, I just taste the dressing for this salad. It's unbelievable. I am going to save it for myself. And in the meantime, let's do a little cleanup so everybody knows that we have a lot of space to work with. Now, here, everybody know the next dish I'm going to do is artichoke. Artichoke are probably the perfect vegetable for entertaining because it's easy to prepare, elegant to serve, and also fun to eat. Why not give them a refreshing dip with a wonderful Asian flavoring? Here, I have all of these artichoke. Look at that, it's beautiful. And of course, we're gonna make a pesto sauce with lime and cilantro and a tiny bit of garlic and lime juice is wonderful to do. And everybody can do this, okay? I don't know about you. You know, artichoke looks very strange to me. In fact, the first guy that eat the artichoke must be very hungry, okay? <laughs> but all this year I've been trying artichoke. You see, this is how you do it. You snap this off, use this to snap this off. First, you gotta cut this out first if you want. You can cut this out because it's faster to cook when you cut this off, okay? You use a, a little scissor to cut this up. Cut this up, cut this up. The great thing about artichoke is it is fun to eat because you have to pull it one by one. It is a little, uh, I call it a fun slow food meant to be savored slowly. Go up with your loved ones, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your grandmother, and just sit there and have a good time and take the time to enjoy. When you choose artichoke, look at this. I have a lot of great artichoke here. When you choose artichoke, make sure that a plum, very plum, big, and also very compact and heavy, has a consistent green color like this. That means it's good, fresh artichoke. They come into different size and different shape. Different, sometimes they're bigger, sometimes they're smaller. You can even cut this out like that, okay? Knife is very good. Now, when you make artichoke, you can allow to make a little mess. Nobody cares, you're doing it in your own kitchen. Who cares? <laughs> and then, when this is done, I even open this up a little bit. You, because when you open this up, you allow the steam to come a little bit faster. You cook things faster. And then, after this is ready, you can actually take it to let it boil. You can steam, you can microwave, you can do a lot of things, okay? In fact, practically all the artichoke is from uh, California. They, they even have the baby California artichoke. You heard about the artichoke capital of the world, Castroville. And I live only about six miles from that place. Oh no, 60 miles, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> 
You can boil it like this or you can steam it like this, okay? Since we're boiling it, we just go like that. And normally it takes about 25 minutes to 30 minutes, up to 35 minutes to do because it depends on how big the artichoke is. You know the thing is, artichoke is also versatile because they are not only nutritious, they're very low in calorie and very, very high in fiber. They have a lot of vitamin C's, folic acid, very low in sodium, but a lot of magnesium, so it's great for you. Now, here, I'm gonna make my pesto sauce. This pesto sauce is very easy to do. First, I have all of these ingredients, sesame seed oil, a tiny bit of walnut oil, or salad oil, a tiny, tiny bit of soy sauce, not much. And then sugar, lemon peel or lime peel, lemon juice or lime juice, this is lime juice. If you don't have lime juice, you can use lemon juice. A tiny bit of garlic. If you need garlic or more garlic, all you have to do is cut this up, and then you just say, ah, done, more garlic right here. And then put them, are you ready? Let's put more garlic over there. Hey, ah, done, more garlic. Love garlic, okay? And then I put a tiny, tiny bit of mayonnaise, not much, tiny bit of mayonnaise. And then mix into this wonderful pesto sauce. This is gonna be beautiful. When it's done, Look at that, we're gonna remove these so everybody can see and enjoy. And, <laughs> look at that, I cannot believe this. I am gonna show you how beautiful this is. This has been cooked for 25 minutes. We cut this in half, this is so beautiful. And we use a knife and cut this up, look at that. We scoop this out, this is scoop right in the middle, out. Okay, scoop out this. You know what you have? You have a beautiful concave pocket right here. And all you have to do is use some sauce and fill this up. Look at that. Fill this up. And this is going to be so easy to do. So wonderful. You cannot believe this. OK? And then you can do several of these at the same time. And when you eat this, you just simply stir this in. <laughs> you have to use the same, it's very important about this particular recipe, same spoon is very important. All the flavor is coming out from the spoon and get into your auto choke, okay? And then once again, oh, use the same spoon. <laughs> I am getting so excited. I'm totally confused. <laughs> oh, look at that. Look at this. And of course, have this one ask your guests to do it themselves. And put more sauce. This is a beautiful pesto with cilantro, lime, and it's a beautiful dish for everybody. Now, by now, your guests are ready for the main course, roast chicken. Let me show you an incredible black rice stuffing that I discovered when I visited Bangkok, Thailand. This is a wonderful dish to do for entertainment because it's very interesting, very easy. Here, I have some cooked black glutinous rice from Thailand. When it's raw, it looks like this. I showed you some time ago, and it can be stored indefinitely. You cook them until they're nice and firm. And then you're gonna put all the other ingredients. I have shallot, chopped water chestnut, Chinese sausage, green onion, black mushroom, shiitake black mushroom, chestnut already soaked. And also I have some quail egg. Look at that, it's a little baby egg. And also menju dates, fresh dates. I'm gonna stir fry all of these first, okay? Very simple to do, everybody can do it. There's a couple of steps. Put a tiny bit of oil. Put shallot, nice and hot, stir. Chinese sausage, right here. A tiny bit of mushroom, green onion, chestnut. Toss, toss, great exercise, toss. As I said always, when you stir fry, don't just stand there and stare, okay? <laughs> stir fry will burn everything. So make sure you stir fry. Make sure, 
stir. And then when it's almost ready, you put the quail egg and the menju date. So this way, the whole stuffing is almost ready. And then mix with black glutinous rice. And then put a tiny bit of pepper, tiny bit of salt, okay? And after you do this, let it cool down for a little while because you want to make sure they are cooled down before you use it, okay? Because the rice is already cooked. And then we're going to remove these and we're going to show you how easy it is to stuff your chicken. Here, I have a chicken. It's totally relaxed. <laughs> and then I put this over here. The first thing you do is use a tiny bit of salt, tiny bit of five spice powder, and a tiny bit of white pepper, and I rub this around. Rub this around. <laughs> Done. We check everything and then we stuff this in. Make sure you stuff this in. Put this in, open this up, and stuff it in. Now when you have time, you can stuff the whole thing. I hope everybody can see this. This is very easy to do, okay? Just in case you miss, you can always turn on the television and Look at it, slow motion. <laughs> Let me show you slow motion. <laughs> <laughs> and then you put them all together. Now, of course, you do not have to put, you don't necessarily have enough space to put the whole thing in there, okay? When it's done, you close it with a bamboo skewer. Hold on to it like that and hold on to this, and you just push it in. Then you brush it with a tiny, tiny bit of soy sauce and sesame seed oil. Mm -hmm. Brush it. This way it will give you that nice, shiny glaze, okay? Crispy glaze, because the tiny bit of caramel, when it's done, of course, you can also use some, some walnut in there. When it's done, you take it over there and you put this in right on this. You cannot bake this right here, okay? You can put this right here. Hold on to it and boom, done. <laughs> and then you're going over there. I'm gonna raise it over there. Oh, look at that. Put it over here. And of course, we always, when we entertain guests, we always cook twice as much. <laughs> this is so hot. And then I'm gonna take this out, okay? Remove these, remove these, uh, come out. And then we're gonna transfer these. And I wanna show you how easy it is. You hold on to this because it's pretty hot. You open this, you open this. And then I wanna show you this is very, very easy to do. And you open this up, you see this whole thing comes out, and you, I want to show you, you can actually have a lot of, of this come out, and all you have to do is put some extra roast walnut right here, and you have a beautiful roasted chicken. Well, that's all our menu for entertaining friends today. Now, all you need are some entertaining friends to serve it to. Till next time, keep good company. And remember, if Yen can cook, so can you. Zai